the calculations that I'm trying to do is just too much. I decide to uh, make a PowerPoint so it's we can skip some of the calculations and just uh, figure out what I'm tr really trying to say. So I want to talk about diagonalizing a matrix that has distinct eigenvalues. I already showed you how to do the 2 by 2 but I want to show you how to do it for a 3 by 3. And once you know how to do 3 by 3, uh, it should be obvious how to do it for 4 by 4. So let's say you're given this matrix A as uh, 10, 12, 6, negative 22, negative 20, negative 8, 26, 18, and 5. Uh, the question is to find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and use them to diagonalize this matrix. Now, to find the eigen, eigenvalues, you have to do the eigenvalue equation, which is to subtract the lambda off the diagonal, and you take the determinant and set it, that equal to zero. And uh, this polynomial of lambda is called the characteristic equation, right? You, you find the solution to the characteristic equation uh, those will be eigenvalues. Now, if the eigenvalues are all distinct, uh, you can there's it's guaranteed that you will have one eigenvectors for ve one eigenvector for each of the eigenvalues, and therefore you can find uh, all the eigenvectors that's needed for diagonalizing. If you have multiplicities, and sometimes you might not have enough eigenvectors to form a square matrix, and that would make it impossible to come up with a diagonalization. So in fact, uh, towards the end of this semester, I will show you that in general, you cannot always diagonalize a matrix, but in most cases you can. In most cases you can generate uh, diagonalize a matrix. Okay, in for this spe special case, we do have uh, a factorization of the characteristic polynomial, which uh, immediately shows that lambda equals to 1, negative 4, and negative 2 are the solutions of the characteristic equation. So these are distinct roots of the characteristic polynomial, right? So it, we should be able to find the eigenvector for each of these. Is that okay? All right. So let's now move on. Uh, for the first case, lambda equals to 1, the a minus lambda i will be this. And the equation for the eigenvector is that a minus lambda i times the vector has to give you the zero vector, right? You're looking for a non-zero column vector x, y, z that satisfies this equation. If this equation is satisfied, then that eigenvector, uh, that, that column vector that you have is called the called a eigenvector for the given eigenvalue. Um, so is that okay so far? It's not that different from how we do it in 2D, right? Okay. Uh, but, you know, in in 2 by 2 case, we were able to just simply solve this easily, but here it's not that easy because you have three variables. So let's make use of the row-reduced echelon form as before. Okay, so let's, let's use row-reduced echelon form. Right, so you do second matrix, and you go to edit, enter, and we're going to put a 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, <clears throat> now, even if uh, there is also 0, 0, 0 at the end, that doesn't, we, we don't really need to put 0, 0, 0 at the end. Uh, uh, we just need to know the RUF of this one. All right, so let's punch the numbers in. 9, 12, and then 6, uh, negative 22. Oh, I did negative. So good. So we have this. Now let's quit. And now go to matrix again, and we are going to go to the math and scroll down 
and do go find the REF, road reduced echelon form. No. What just happened? Maybe I have to go up. Yeah, there it is. Going up is faster. Okay, REF, enter. And then second matrix again, and we choose matrix A because that's the one that we need. And then enter. And as you can see, we get the values uh, negative 0.4, which is same as negative 2 over 5, and uh, 0.8, which is the same as 4 over 5, right? <clears throat> On the exam, you don't want us to show the transformations like we did for the homework, for homework one, right? We could just use R, EF, in our calculator. Oh, there's one question where I ask you to do the transformation. Okay. Yeah, but apart from that one place, uh, everything else you can just use the R, EF. As I just have to check just for once that you do know, okay? All right, uh, any questions so far? Okay. So we get this. Now the problem is, what does this mean? You have to know what it means, right? Um, it means that you can read off the coefficients. This is 1x plus 0y minus 2 over 5z equals to 0. That's what this first line means, right? So that's what you have. And the next line says, uh, 0x plus 1y plus 4 over 5z equals to 0, and the last line just says 0 is equal to 0. So the last line doesn't contain any information. Now we want to uh, find x, y, and z that will satisfy this equation. Uh, of course, you can put anything. So, for example, you can just set z as 1, and the result of that will be that you get some value for uh, x and y, but those values will be decimals, okay, which you don't like. So the best number that, that you probably want here would be z equals to 5, right? If you put z equals to 5, then if you plug in 5 here, then 5 and 5 cancels. So you have x minus 2 equals to 0, so you get x equals to 2. If you plug in 5 here, 5, 5 cancels, and you get y equals to negative 4. Good? All right, next, let's do the same. Oh, <clears throat> so what did we just figure out? Uh, that means we've obtained the eigenvector 2 comma negative 4 comma 5 for this eigenvalue lambda equals to 1. And the other ones are similar. Again, uh, for lambda equals to negative 4, plug in negative 4 instead of the lambda. So... That's what you get in the diagonal. The, uh, off diagonal elements are exactly the same as before, uh, but because you have 10 minus negative 4, that'll be 14, this will be negative 16, and this will be positive 9. So you have this again, and uh, this is not that different from the previous one because uh, only the diagonal entries change, right? So let's go to second matrix, go to edit, and just change the diagonal elements. So this should be 14. Okay, and then this number should be negative 16. And then this number should be positive 9. Okay. All right, so now let's quit. Do the RAF again. Math. Enter. Second matrix again. A. Enter. And now this time you have 10001.5000. Zero, 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 zero. <clears throat> so you get this. Again, uh, if you rewrite what this matrix means in terms of a system, you can see that the first line is saying 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z should equal to 0, which forces x to be 0, regardless of the value of z or y. But then for the second equation, it says y plus 1 have z is 0, and therefore setting z as 2 is a good value, right? Uh, that makes y as an integer. If you put z as 1, that's another possibility, but then you'll have y as negative 0.5 which is a bit ugly. We don't like that. All right, so this is 
this is uh, what I get for the lambda equals to the negative 4. That's the eigenvector. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the third case is pretty much the same, so let's just skip the computation. If you do it, you get the REF as 1, 0, negative 1 over 4, 0, 1, 3 over 4. So uh, you can solve it to get z equals to 4, x equals to 1, and y equals to negative 3. So just yes. to be clear, yeah. um, whenever you have a fraction, you want to get rid of the fraction and then set that variable equal. Yeah, I mean, there, there are many choices. Uh, you could choose z as negative 4. In that case, you, you'll get x as negative 1 and y as positive 3. You could also choose z as positive 8. It will just make x and y values bigger. Or you can just choose z as 1. z equal to 1 would almost always work. Sometimes z wouldn't appear at all. z might be forced to be 0. But in, in other, usually what happens is you can just set z as 1. Uh, then x and y will be fractions in many cases. So right. why doesn't that change? Like, why, why can't we all have like, different numbers? What do you mean? Like, uh, uh, what, what, what I'm saying is that for a given eigenvalue uh, lambda, uh, and if you find an eigenvector, any multiple of that eigenvector is again an eigenvector. Yeah. So you, you, can, you can take this eigenvector and multiply it by one half or multiply it by two or any other number, and that will again be an eigenvector. Okay. But all of them will be multiples of one another. Uh, the reason for that is because our eigenvalues have multiplicity 1. Now, if multiplicity is 2, then things are more complicated. You might have, uh, you basically have a two-dimensional space of eigenvectors. Or you may not have, it's either one-dimensional or two-dimensional. So you might have a more complicated case. We're just doing the very simplest case because uh, I want to motivate uh, what comes after, which is uh, the theory of vector spaces. All right. So here are the results so far. Uh, the eigenvectors we found was 2, negative 4, 5, 0, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 3, and 4. And the eigenvalues are 1, negative 4, and negative 2. Eigen so uh, may maybe I... I might have not made this clear. Let's see. See, we, we have basically two kinds of eigenvector equation. So uh, we say, sorry, we say uh, eigenvector uh, is a vector v such that matrix A times V is same as multiplying a number times V. That's one way to write it. But this is same thing as, this is same thing as, you can bring the lambda, so you can bring the lambda V as lambda I V, identity times V is same as V, right? And then you can bring the entire right side to the left and factor the v out to make it look like a minus lambda i times v equals to 0. Right? So I, <coughs> I've been using this equation to figure out what these eigenvectors are. But its true meaning is this, because what's an eigenvector in this sense? It's a vector where the matrix operates like a constant multiple. It's a direction uh, where the matrix acts as, as if it's only multiplying by a number. Uh, and it's a direction which makes the, the matrix look simple. Uh, I'll try to explain what that means uh, in a separate lecture, uh, but, but that's what it means, okay? All right, so, so we write down the results in the following way. 
write down the results in the following way. And this is the most important part. So, so are we good until so far? We, we have the eigenvectors figured out. Uh, now, I guess the, the hard part is how do we use this to diagonalize the matrix? Uh, so far, it doesn't seem to be related in any way. But the first important thing is you can take the three equations that we just found and using that, put these vectors, eigenvectors, side by side, right? And multiply the matrix A. So it's like A times V1, A times V2, A times V3. We'll give you the right side, th these right side. But then the right side is same thing as multiplying the column of the eigenvectors by this diagonal matrix. And you should really check that this is correct. So for example, if you multiply th this matrix times this one and look at the second column, the second column will only be multiplied by negative 4, resulting in 0, positive 4, negative 8, which gives you this right side of the second equation. So it, that's what you get. So this only works for square matrix. Uh, <clears throat> eigenvectors and eigenvalues only make sense for square matrices. But more, furthermore, uh, what we are writing only makes sense if we have enough eigenvectors. See, uh, as I said, sometimes if you have multiplicities, you might not have enough eigenvectors. Then what happens is that you fail to make a square matrix out, out of them. So if, if you have a 3 by 3 matrix, your goal is to find three eigenvectors then you can form a square matrix out of them. Uh, if you have a 4 by 4, how many eigenvectors do you want? Four of them, right? Yeah. If you have 5 by 5, you would want five distinct eigenvectors for uh, those different eigenvalues uh, because you want to form a square matrix. Now, you might say, well, even if you have two of them, can't you just repeat one of the eigenvectors? The answer is no, because I want this, this vec, uh, matrix that I formed to be invertible. If you repeat or uh, if you just simply take any linear combinations of the previous ones to make the new ones, it will fail to be invertible. Okay? So uh, only when you have enough eigenvectors that are linearly independent, that's another concept, uh, if they are, uh, in 3D geometry, if they form a volume rather than a plane, if these three vectors, they lie on a plane, then you can't invert this matrix, right? But uh, here, it, 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 you, we know that this is not going to be on a plane. It will be invertible, okay? And there are some reasons why. Okay? But anyways, uh, if, you, if you agree that this is true, now we have diagonalization because we can rewrite this equation like this. It's like if we call this matrix uh, formed by the eigenvectors as P and, and uh, matrix D as this, this diagonal matrix on the right side and A is our original matrix, then the equation looks like AP times PD. AP equals to PD, right? Uh, and then all you have to do now is to multiply P inverse to both sides of AP equals to PD. So the left side will be P inverse AP. But look what happens on the P inverse P, D. P inverse and P multiplies to what? Identity. They cancel. So you end up with P inverse A, P as a diagonal matrix. That's called the diagonalization of a matrix. Okay? So our uh, final output is that we've made this matrix A to look like a diagonal matrix by... Uh, multiplying P inverse and then P. That's, okay?